Yes, that's looking good. Okay, so thanks for, yeah, perfect. So recording is also working now. Thanks for joining um, session B uh, for the presentation of our paper towards a modern CMAC workflow. Uh, my name is Heinz-Peter Lichtenecker. I'm a PhD student at Technical University of Graz. And um, I joined uh, to write this paper with Raphael Riebel from Technische Hochschule Ingolstadt. So we uh, came together while I was focusing on um, his uh, really excellent work on the CMIC packages within Arteri. So um, to get started, let me just introduce what I'm going to present now. Uh, obviously, I want to talk a little bit about the motivation for another build system, an alternate alternative to the existing makefile based system within Omnet++. And um, then also I want to introduce CMake as a powerful alternative, what can be done with CMake, what are what advantages. And uh, also I will show some, some insights about uh, using an alternative integrated development environment, um, mainly Visual Studio Code. And um, I think there will be enough time to also give a technical preview with the um, well-known TikTok example, how this can be built with Visual Studio Code and the CMAC work, work packages. So um, motivation for another build system, maybe just to highlight what's my motivation. Actually, I think this could be interesting for the for some of you. I am quite new to the to the Omnet Plus Plus community, so this is also the first time I'm giving a presentation at the summit. And um, for me, um, I come across Omnet Plus Plus just a few months ago. Um, basically, when I started with my PhD, focusing on networking and on re, uh, time sensitive networking. And I have a strong background in software development. And um, so I'm within my really small team um, and my PhD thesis, to be honest, is also uh, focused on, on, the, on the actual industry because um, it's partnered together with Infineon Technical University is partner, partnering here with Infineon Technologies. So my goal is to create a simulation which really contains production ready source code. So I really want to get from my simulation results to production to actual testing as fast as possible. So just to give you an, a background, what's my motivation uh, for another build system. So basically Omnet comes with an Eclipse-based integrated development environment. It um, has its pre-built Mingiway MSYS environment. So it's just Linux build tools for Windows. Um, and it offers somehow an out of the box experience. It's IDE, it's got a tool chain, it got a lot of examples for beginners. So it's really, really easy to start with. Um, on the other hand, there are also some, let's say drawbacks, um, especially when talking about the build system. So the Omnet++ makefile based system um, is of course feeling native on Unix based systems. So when you're using Linux, everything is fine. Um, on the other hand, I, I am tailored to, to Windows. I have to use Windows. So this was just somehow cumbersome to get into this MSYS world, finding out how everything is working, especially if, when you have a strong CMake background. Then um, this Makefile-based build system also has the disadvantage of um, making management of dependencies and variants kind of difficult. So it's not so easy and straightforward to do especially when you have other CMake based dependencies, which is really common because CMake is, is widely used in industry and also in open source projects, of course. And the makefile based system somehow also complicates the use of other IDEs. And this is again, especially true on Windows. So you really have to stick with the pre-built Eclipse based uh, integrated development environment to get, let's say a fully featured experience. Um, just to clarify why CMake. So um, for the alphas, for both of us, we believe that the well-designed software architecture and built environment reduces the management overhead and thus allows even small teams to maintain and improve complex projects. So this is especially true when we are talking about growing dependencies, when we are talking about integrating testing, and especially when you then want to bring your simulation results into actual production codes when you want to switch from finding results within your research and then bringing this to, for example, a prototype or whatever. 
So um, especially in such a small team, you often want to avoid to write code more than once. So I think this is true for all of us. We want to write code only once. We want to test it. We want to make sure that it's stable and we want to make sure that we find all the bugs. So I'm introducing uh, a well-established or well-designed software architecture and especially also a built environment. This can reduce this management overhead a lot. So CMake is the de facto standard for almost every C, C++ open source project thanks to its versatility. So there's uh, a CMake workflow for almost every, every open source project available. And CMake is able to generate native built environments that will compile source code, create libraries, generate wrappers, build executables in arbitrary combinations. So this comes in really handy when you try or when you start to manage various build targets. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. And of course it's native. So it's really uh, focusing on what tools are available on your operating system and getting out the best performance. And finally, CMake is cross-platform from the beginning and also cross-user, so to say. So when you are, share your C when you are sharing your CMake-based project, it's really easy for other developers to jump in because um, CMake will do all the heavy lifting by creating make files, for example, ninja bind rules. Also, maybe it's a little bit better idea to show a picture of what I actually mean by generating. So um, CMake can be a powerful alternative and so just to clarify, I mean, we are all <laughs> for sure somehow related to CC++ development and there's one thing clear, so one does not simply get an executable from source code. We are all familiar that we have to tell the compiler, the linker, uh, the pre-compiler, pre-processor what to do to ensure that our, finally, our final target, our final executable uh, is working or to, to actually get to this final executable. So a typical workflow when working with CMake looks as follows. We have the developer, which is working with the integrated development environment and the developer is then writing source files on the one hand. On the other hand, on the other hand, the developer has to write CMake files. So this is just, let's say you have to learn another language to compile your actual language. So CMake files, um, they, they can offer a lot of automation. They can offer a lot of features, but you have to get used to them. So this is just a drawback. But on the other hand, CMake will, do, will then do all the heavy lifting when it comes to build, build orchestration. So CMake has various backends, for example, Ninja, very efficient uh, tool chain orchestrator, tool chain manager, which is actually then calling the compilers, preprocessors, whatever, to get to the final binary. And one big advantage when you are doing this, uh, when you are doing um, the, the final source code or target generation in that way is that you, that CMake knows about everything. So CMake is aware of all the paths. CMake knows about all the binaries which are getting built. CMake knows just everything which is relevant. And that's also uh, an entry point to do IDE configuration. So if CMake knows which paths are included, um, which binaries are built, whatever we can somehow try to generate IDE configuration files to finally back, get back to an integrated development environment experience. So this is something I want to show or highlight then in a technical preview. Okay, so what are requirements? Obviously write code only once. If the concept performs in, sim in simulation, have everything ready for the actual production code. Then minimize management overhead by having a single source of truth, a single source of configuration. Again, when sharing code, um, this can all be managed by a version control system. So it's really straightforward to have this single source of truth, the single source of configuration. Then, especially in my case of interest, allow for continuous integration, automating tests, making sure your source code is well tested before giving it to others. And finally, um, you will end up hopefully with a seamless workflow between simulation and actual production code. So transferring results should be made really easy. Um, so when talking about transferring those results, it's really important also to talk about the actual build strategy, the actual build environment. How can this look like for an Omnet++ neatly integrated into sophisticated projects? We for sure want to have our actual simulation target, our actual simulation built. So in the given example, which is also highlighted in the paper, we have a so-called application library. So all the business logic, everything which determines how, for example, a TCP server is behaving 
is integrated into this application library. And then we have our simulation library, which just integrates those features of the application library, but the business, lo business logic is decoupled from other dependencies. On the other hand, we will for sure want to have a testing executable, which is then also able to be automated within continuous integration environments. So for example, t-test or catch2 or whatever. So there are multiple options available for testing C++ code. And finally, we want to have our actual production code. And um, I made a really good experience using RCO, which is a C++ asynchronous network library um, offering nat native communications on Windows, Linux, Unix-based systems, um, abstracting away OS dependencies. Uh, but the really important thing about this, how we can ensure that we do not have direct relationships between the actual executable, which we want to ship, for example, to the customer, which we want to ship to the prototype from having dependencies to the actual simulation library, which is interested, interesting doing research, doing finding out if, for example, a protocol or TCP server is actually working. So this is done by this platform extraction layer. So I'm ensuring that the application library uses interfaces available inside the platform extraction layer and the simulation library will then, of course, call or will finally be built depending on the Omnet++ Ionet extraction layer. While the executable will then be related to the asynchronous interface uh, execution library. So you see, by creating multiple platform extraction layers, we will be able having independent, independent standalone executables, for example, test executables, the simulation library. So this is just one strategy, of course, uh, one can apply. I just wanted to highlight here that um, especially with ASIO and INET, uh, once you are figuring out that both are somehow performing event-driven asynchronous interfacing, so from ASIO you will get callbacks when data arrives, from INET you will get a callback uh, when, you, for example, data arrives on your TCP socket, so it's really, really easy or it's not, not, I mean, obviously you have to invest some time, but it's possible to find uh, interconnections between INET and RCO, and then you can define a common interface to the actual application library. So this is just what I wanted to highlight and uh, also um, highlight why I'm using those libraries. Okay, so finally getting to developing with Visual Studio Code, again, I want to highlight um, why we are actually um, doing this. So the Omnet++ IDE is, offers a straightforward workflow. This is nothing to discuss here. And um, it it's, has all these self, self-contained simulation models without dependencies to third-party components. So it's really an out-of-the-box experience to getting started. Obviously, this does not ship with CMAKE support. So there are plugins available, but they are kind of cumbersome to use. And I'm not familiar with them. And um, Eclipse can become bulky and slow at some time points. So obviously, these this are maybe uh, things we have to fight every day. So um, it's kind of easy to ask the community what also the, what's also the opinion of the community um, by, for example, this Stack Overflow survey from 2021. So it's quite, quite um, um, recent. For, uh, and you can see that almost every Eclipse using developer wants to switch to Visual Studio Code. And we also see here that Visual Studio Code has the um, largest share in the market in the meantime. So it's really, really a common IDE. And it's um, also, let's say, um, really often used simply because of the, of the available extensions of its flexibility. So Visual Studio Code, in the end, is cross-platform, highly customizable. And there are a lot of plugins you can use to create a fully featured integrated development environment uh, once you decided to use Visual Studio Code. Some of these, just to highlight them, is the CPP tool, um, the CMake tool, the CMake tools extension, actually. Uh, there's also an Omnet++ extension for highlighting uh, the net language. And there is also debugging support for LLDB, for example, available. So these are just some, some extensions you can use. You can also add others um, as you go, as you need them. Um, but these are the tools which are, let's say, at least necessary to work with CMake and with uh, C++ code within Visual Studio Code. So once 
One is supporting IntelliSense. This is the CPP tools and uh, making sure that you get, get code highlight, highlighting, code suggestions. Then we have obviously the CMAC language support, the CMAC tool chaining automation tool, ensuring that you can walk through, uh, that you can automate the CMAC tasks. And yeah, so I think this is just giving an overview. So finally, I would just ask if there are any immediate questions. Let me just open the chat if I have overseen something. I'm not so familiar with Zoom, but yeah, chat here is the chat. Okay, so there are currently no questions. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask. I will not try to switch to Visual Studio Code. Let me just try if this is working. Yes, just give me a short feedback if you can see first of all Visual Studio Code and if the and if the 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 um, let's say the, the size of the font is big enough. It's perfect. I can yeah, see. Yeah, everything. I think it's great. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so let's deep dive into CMake. Um, I would just try to get started in some time point and highlight how um, how the workflow can look like. So first of all, there is there are some basic CMake instructions telling minimum versions or whatever. I just to step across the, uh, those. The uh, the source files are also available on a GitHub repository if you want to walk through them later on once again or if you have any questions. Um, I can now just make here, for example, options instructing CMake to build optional parts of the source code. So, for example, um, I just added here INET as a dependency, and INET is really complex to build, uh, to be honest. So, it's for sure the complex, uh, complexest thing I have built since a long time. Yeah. And um, so, I made sure that I can deactivate INET as a dependency because the build takes a lot, uh, takes a long of time, especially, at least on my computer. And um, so we will see later on how these options can then be used within the source code. You can pass them simply on the command line. Uh, you can also pass them directly here in the integrated development environment. I will highlight this later then um, to, for example, activate testing, activate simulation builds within your environment. Then we are just defining the actual project. And then the first really important thing comes here into play. Um, you can see that I'm instructing CMake that it will find additional modules, additional CMake source files on a specific path. So um, we made sure that the Omnet++ CMake package is available uh, online on the official Omnet++ repository. So thanks again for everyone supporting in the journey. And um, so you can simply add here the Omnet++ CMake package as, for example, a Git submodule and uh, just pull it into your source code, making all those functionality we added here available to your project with this single line uh, with the statement here, ensuring that CMake is able to find this additional package. Then, um, yeah, this is just some, let's say, um, workaround. I'm using uh, CLang um, LLVM uh, for, my, for my project, so I also want to make sure that I use the corresponding linker um this is just some workaround i found um so um, ensuring that the linker flags the linker fuses are set correctly um, those issues can often take a lot of time to find them uh, especially when you are compiling inet and you are linking inet linking inet with with um, the default ld linker can a lot of it can really take a lot of time so i'm making sure i'm switching here to the llvm linker as well yeah so um I think just switch here to the interesting part. I am ensuring here that Omnet++ is a, that the packages are found. So this is already calling CMake internal functions. And now CMake will also make sure that it finds Omnet++ on your path, that everything is present, that all the executable, the build system needs are found. So you don't have to think twice about it. Just let CMake find the package and it will do all the rest for you. Uh, then there are a lot of Omnet++ helpers available, and I have added here several uh, ways of how the package can be used, and I just want to briefly highlight them. So um, the first way is using the add OPP target function, which simply creates an Omnet++ target based on a given source code folder. So it's really important to ensure that um, your source code folder follows specific rules. I mean, just they are the common Omnet++ rules. 
So it's important to have here a subfolder where your file lives that your C++ files are ending on the .cc extension, file extension. So just some basic, basic things uh, um, to follow. I also mentioned them here. This will then ensure that the CMAC package will generate a build target simply based on the files given in your system. I think this is really handy when talking about how we can integrate INET, for example, complex libraries, how you can integrate existing source code, existing simulation packages. It comes, by, it comes down or it boils down to executing this at OPP target command. I will just highlight this later on as well when showing the INET example, but just to, just to show you how it's done. Um, and finally, I can also instruct CMake to generate run and debug configurations, run and debug targets by calling at OPP run. So um, I will show this then uh, also in a second how this is then showing, shown within the, within, the, within the integrated development environment, but just to highlight how easy it is. Uh, finally, we have obviously to link with the simulation DLL. Um, there's also a second way by not using this auto generation function, this automatic target uh, function, but explicitly adding source code files so for the sake of simplicity, I just renamed here TXC18, the TikTok example, not version 18, uh, to CPP, such that it is, it is ignored by this function here. Um, just I also added here this in a comment if you're interested why this is that way. Uh, in this case, I am creating a library, a shared library, uh, in a more or less manual way. I'm instructing CMake that I want to add the source file here. I, I'm setting here target properties, telling that the net folder property of this target is just giving us the source folder. So it will find all the network description files um, within the source folder. And obviously I'm also adding here messages to this target. So just ensure that I'm having here this target name and I'm also having using here the same target name. So I'm instructing CMake, it should generate uh, message files, it should generate the source code for these message files, and it should relate this generated source code directly with the project name of the target name. And, and now it's getting interesting. I'm adding here third party CMake dependency speed lock, which is a really, really fast and uh, efficient uh, C, C++ logging backend library. It's a really versatile tool. I'm using it a lot. So that's also why I used it as an example here. And you can see it really comes down to adding the subdirectory containing the speed log source code. So just have a look here. I'm just going here to external speed log. You can see I also added your speed log as a CMake um, sub, a Git, Git submodule, sorry, as a Git submodule. And you see in a moment, a CMake lists file is present within the speed log folder. Um, CMake is able to handle this dependency completely independent, uh, automating everything, building it with the correct settings. So this is really easy to do. And so we can add any CMake based third party dependency we want um, normally with just a few uh, lines of CMake code. Uh, ensuring that we can integrate them with our existing projects. And finally, just compare to the previous step of linking everything together. This time I'm linking with the Omnet++ simulation library, but I am also linking again against the speed lock target. So ensuring that everything which comes in by calling at subdirectory is added to my actual um, simulation library. And I don't have to think twice about CMake will do the rest. And finally, I'm also creating here a run target again. So this is just another way. So we have the fully automated way, which is, comes in really handy when handling existing uh, simulation packages. Um, there's also this manual way if you want to have more fine game control about what sources you are building, what sources you are adding. And then last but not least, just showing how easy it is to use those switches within CMake code then. Um, so I added in the beginning this option build INET. Um, I can check now if this is given. If so, then there comes this quite complicated INET build uh, source code. Um, so there is a lot of automation behind it because INET needs some additional instruction how it can be built. To be honest, this is also some kind of boilerplate code. I think I just uh, used exactly the same version I, I, I'm also showing here already two or three times. I think also Raphael has more or less the same 
um, eine Dependency Management within his source code, there hasn't changed him uh, a lot. So uh, to, to, to say it simple, we are just extracting here instructions for the actual build step then of INET by, for example, calling a Python script. So this is also the reason why we are needing here Python. Um, so we are calling the OMET++ feature tool um, just to extract what features should be built for INET. And then we can finally, again, generate uh, the source code files, adding here this custom command to generate a feature file, feature header. So yes, that's complicated, but um, you only have to understand it once. And since then I did not change uh, this part of the source code. And finally, once you generated all the source files, you generated all the features header file, the uh, on that plus plus defines file, whatever, um, it's again coming down to calling this simple command at OPP target, um, depending on the features file, depending on the Omnet plus plus defines file, adding this make make statements, and then you are done. And finally, I'm just for the for completeness linking against all available Omnet plus plus libraries in that case. And if you are in Windows, so this is again something which can take a lot of time, you will also have to link it and uh, the WinSocket 2 library, if I can remind that correctly, what's that aberration for? So um, just to give an overview, I know this, especially this INET code is, uh, uh, is could be hard to understand if you are familiar with the make file process, the make file automation, I think this would also be uh, quite straightforward or is quite straightforward because it's just simply reassembling what's done within the make file and bringing this to the CMake world uh, within, the, within the other automation, the Eclipse automation tool. Um, I just want to highlight now how easy it is to use Visual Studio Code as an integrated development environment. Just remember the slide I've shown before, there was this feedback loop ensuring that um, results from Omnet++ are propagated back to um, Visual Studio Code. And within Visual Studio Code, you are using um, such JSON files to set up your environment, to tell, to instruct Visual Studio Code about all those settings for those extensions you have. So in my case, I'm obviously on a Windows host system, on a Windows system. So I have to instruct CMake about additional available um, compiler paths. This is also highlighted in the paper. Um, so there is just a simple CMake kits JSON command. You can add here your um, compiler path, instructing actually Visual Studio Code plugins where it can find those packages or where it can find those uh, tool chains actually. And then you can simply switch here between the tool chains. You see, it's finding a lot here. I'm using my uh, Omnet++ 6.10 uh, with uh, virtual environment for Python. So, um, Within this, um, this file, I'm just adding here also uh, an environment script, setting up some paths necessary for Omnet++. And yeah, so this is just, just for, for completeness how it's done on Windows. More interesting is maybe this um, settings.json file. So in here, you find all those default instructions for uh, Omnet++, uh, for, CS, for Visual Studio Code. And you will also find here some additional CMake configuration settings. So this, this could be the point where you're just adding, for example, um, we're just adding, yeah. Come on, that was not what I wanted to do. So I just adding here, for example, build INET on, and then it will build with INET. So just to show how simple it could be to activate um, those options within um, the CMake files uh, we have discussed previously. So then the others just also for my uh, testing or whatever. Um, much more interesting is this launch.json file. And you see this, this looks kind of complicated. Um, there's a lot of instructions giving for, given for the, for the um, actual debugging plugin within Visual Studio Code. So it needs some information about the program to execute. It needs a lot of various arguments. And I mean, for this simple example, that's still straightforward, but having, for example, INET is a dependency, building multiple targets, this can escalate really quickly. So there again comes those steps or this information we discussed previously in, in, in hand that we that CMake knows everything about all those build targets. CMake knows everything about all those paths. 
So it's really easy to um, to automate this step to auto generate this launch.json file. So maybe just just to actually build it once so that you also believe me, I will just delete this launch.json file and I will also delete my build directory. So yes, delete it. I hope I deleted the correct one. Yeah, perfect. So we see no launch.json file present. Um, um obviously i cannot run any debugging session now because i did not define how it should debug my files so i can simply switch to the uh, cmake tab here on the left and the first step within every cmake um, build is the configuration phase so i will just configure now all projects and this will take a second but just to walk you through the through the steps so it's not cmake is checking if every if the tool chain is working if everything is given as expected um it finds omnet plus plus on the path it finds a suitable python integrator it's um, now adding the speed lock dependencies and that's it for the configuration phase. So now we end up with all the configuration to build, build all those various targets in place. So we will build two DLLs. We will build speedlock as a static library. We will uh, update our launch.json file. And um, there are also those run targets I can show in a second. But principle, in principle, this is all done based on those simple instructions we have given to CMake. And if I build this now, it now obviously also will um, compile all the given source files. Um, it's generating the message files. This is also already aware of the uh, out of three builds, which have been, I think, introduced with Omnet++6. Plus plus so it's not generating the message files in place in the file system tree. It will copy the the actual message description to the build folder, and it will then generate the message files are um, out of three. So you will get the build folder. And when you delete, when you clean up everything, you will also force CMake to regenerate the message files. So this is um, quite handy. Um, you don't have to touch your existing source files, your existing tree to execute the actual build. So this also, we can also have a look here just uh, for completion into the build folder. Um, you see, we have here, for example, this TikTok gen folder, all the message files, all the generated files will end up in here, um, completely automated by CMake. Um, so I think now the build is also done. Perfect. Uh, we end up with the dynamic link libraries we need for running our simulation. And obviously, and most important, we also got a launch.json file, which is generated automatically based on the given targets. Um, and this finally allows us also to simply run here, for example, um, TikTok 18 with EDB debugger. And I just will launch this now. You can also switch it to the terminal. Um, normally it takes a second to launch everything. Hopefully it's working. And yeah, so basically that's it. We end up with a fully integrated developer experience. Um, yeah, now it's also executing it finally. I think my laptop needs a little more power for doing Zoom and this technical preview at the same time. So, yeah, so obviously let me just bring this in. Um, I added here a breakpoint at the initializing step of the TXC18 speed lock module just to show for completeness. We get here a call stack really nicely done within, within, um, within Visual Studio Code. We can have a look into variables, whatever. I also obviously can do here my steps. So really a really fully featured integrated developer, developer environment experience um, just by writing those CMake files. So we'll just now let this run. Um, yeah, um, this is just, I think, straightforward. I don't have to show this, but just what I want to show um, inside the source code files, I'm using um, speed lock. So whenever I call here this um, in, the, in the handle message, obviously I'm using the uh, messaging system from provided by Omnit++, but I'm using also here speed lock, uh, the speed lock logging interface. 
I activated a file-based logger, which will flush every three seconds. So we can just have a look into our um, run folder. And you see, I end up here with a log file, uh, which, has, uh, which has the actual messages. Um, yeah, which is just logging the same information to a file-based system, but just showing how easy it is to use other CMake file or CMake based dependencies. Okay, so I'm not sure if I am on time because I think the, how long do we have time? Let me just check. So, ah, uh, yeah, okay. So it says that we should be done at around about 10. So, um, yeah, I'm open for discussions, open for questions. I hope it was interesting. I hope you're still here <laughs> and um, yeah, feel free to ask. And obviously also Rafael is in the chat. So um, if there are any further questions, I think you can also help me out um, to, give some, to give some insights. So, all of these things that I need to actually build uh, Omnet this way is uh, available at your GitHub, I guess, or? Definitely. So um, we made sure. So thanks again. I think also I see Rudolf also here um, who, who helped who helped transferring um, the CMake project, which was first in its last by Raphael to an official Omnet++ um, repository. So it's available on GitHub. Um, just giving a short history, I think um, Raphael started working on that also because he needed it for dependency management. Then um, there was a contribution, I think from Tor is his name. So he also contributed a lot improvements and I uh, came into play this year. And um, just to, to push things forward, we decided to make it an official Omnit++ repository um, together with the Omnit++ community. Um, so that's available for everyone. And um, the, just let me go back to the PowerPoint slides. There are two, uh, where is this? This is here. There are two links available. Obviously it's on the plus plus slash CMake. So for the CMake package and for the, for the source code of the technical preview, it's available on my repository. I made it public and also added some built instructions uh, for, for uh, completion. And um, just in terms of building Omnet, so building Omnet, at least on Windows, I did not touch this. So this is still the same. You have to build Omnet before you can create your first projects, whatever. So just stick with the, with the cover, become an Omnet++ Omnet plus plus, uh, build instructions um, using, using the given MCs environment and so on. So this is really straightforward and really easy to use. And then you can just simply continue with your own projects within Visual Studio Code. Okay, are there any further questions? Uh, thanks, Rafael also posted the link in the chat. So to make it a little bit easier.